Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So, we are going to move on to another chapter this morning. So, we're going to be looking at um, the classification and the ordination of plant community. So, classification in simpler terms. We're just going to be looking at um, the classification methods, which are said to attempt to place similar stands together in district entities so that is in associations or other units which are cleanly separated from other stands and units and then in this chapter we are going to look at two different types of classification mainly um classification based on dominancy and also classification based on the entire flora so with the classification um, based on the dominancy we want to talk more about the climates then so the climates are said to have classified the north american vegetation on the basis of only one or two dominant species in each unit so sometimes the dominant um, taxon was listed only to the genus level, which implies that the species might vary, vary um, locally within the vegetation unit. This is an extreme em emphasis on the overstory dominance and the results may mask um, the importance the important um, variations which occur when the um, understory vegetations so therefore in some um, regions the overstory um, dominant may remain constant while the ecologically important um, understory changes occur so then in light of this the dobomir in the 1952 they modified this clement simple scheme by listing two species per unit so that is an overstory species and also an understory species separated by a slash so in this way for example um a pinus pendorosa slash pushia tritonate um tree shrub mosaic would be classified from a pinus pendorosa um, slash agropyron spicatum woodland grass mosaic whereas in the latter um in the earlier um classification it would only be a pinus pendorosa um unit only without the two of other understory um, um, species which may differ so in simpler scheme they would be harmed together as the pinus pendorosa unit like i just mentioned so in order to classify vegetation um, on the basis of dominancy any quadrant um, transact point or distance sampling method can be used if it yields data that is that can be relativized so dominance can be based on relative canopy cover density uh, basal area biomass or some of any of these that is when we start talking about the importance of values so basically what we are trying to say here is that with the Clements, they only looked at the overstory species. So when we're talking about the overstory species, we mean the, the large tree species. So the large trees and they're not focusing on the smaller trees such as the herbs and also the grasses. So the Clements only looked at the large trees and then they classified their vegetations according to that for example let's say you have um 
a community wherein you have marula trees dominating the particular area. So you go, you were going to classify that particular area as a marula woodland and then not focus or look into the other smaller species which are found underneath the, the marula vegetation. But then with the Daubamie, they came and tried to classify their vegetations in by looking at two um, species, the overstory species and also the understory species. So if you have a marula um, vegetation, a dominating an area, which is an overstory species, and then we also going to look what is found underneath that particular vegetation which is dominated by a marula um, species which means we're going to look for herbs and shrubs if we find that they you know there are other smaller shrubs which are dominating for example let's say you find that there is a bead and spilosa which means you're going to say this area is mainly dominated by you're going to classify it as a marula slash um beaten spilosa um woodland um unit instead of marula unit so then coming to the first phase which is the third phase which involves the relevant method or what we call the brown bracket method so then the choice of the sample site um, should avoid mixed or what we call the heterogeneous um, stands. As you know, for a site to qualify for a relevé, it needs to show some homogeneity instead of heterogeneity. So we have to find also a minimal area, as you know, that's one of the aims of the relevé methods and then it should be um so some centralized um replicate sampling so the brown brocade cover abundance estimates and then also the collection of the site and soil data is part of the process in this particular case when you are trying to classify vegetation um looking at the entire flora then the second phase which is the analytical phase which involves also the sorted tables so the goal of this now of this phase is to prepare a table that show the relevant data in the organized form so the raw table is constructed and then the species are recorded according to occurrence of each species forming a consistency table. So species of the intermediate consistency are used to form a partial differential table. So this table is the is reordered in relation to the presence or absence of differentiating um, species into differential um, tables. In this particular um, phase, we're trying to organize the species which show some association. We put them together in, in a table. We're trying to sort them into groups. So then it involves some steps. So the first step is the row table. So you find that we have the columns which would be representing the relevant numbers and then we'll be having the rows representing the species as you will see in the figure which will follow. So the order of arranging the data is not important but it is advised to arrange the species um, along the gradient from dry to wet or from wet to dry. So the code 
in the table which you will say which will follow will refer to cover um abundance and also sociability and sociability is just an exp an expression of the horizontal pattern of the species and the degree of clustering of species so this is how a row table would look like so with the with this particular with the rows representing what we call the relevant number and then the columns representing the the plant species so it should be clearly visible um, on the nodes that you have with you there so in this particular case we trying to group species which are seem to be occurring in association in close association we group them together so that later on we can try and classify our vegetations according to the occurrence and also maybe the absence of some of the species if some species um, keep showing up in different areas but then they keep showing um, appearing um, constantly so the frequency of their appearances together becomes more and more as we checking or replicating our our quadrants and then we're going to put those species um, together so this is just a row table which is still to be sorted again so the cross there they indicating the cover which is less than one percent which means then that sociability there or what we call association is understood to be one unless if it is noted second step is the consistency table so here we're trying to arrange the species according to consistency of occurrence if if two species seem to be occurring at in different places together constantly which means showing some consistency so this is how many plots a species occur in so if species one and two are occurring in say in plot one plot two plot five plot six plot seven and then we are going to put those particular species together or group them together so then the calculation of the relevant frequency for each species is the number of occurrence over the number of relevant multiplied by a hundred so this will be a percentage so then the table is rearranged to highest consistency um to lowest consistency so that is from the highest consistency to the lowest um, consistency then we have the classification based on the entire flora so we're saying that the plant communities community types are conceived as um, units based purely on their total floristics approach so among species that make up a community, you find that they are species which are better indicators of a certain vegetation. So these species, we often term them the diagnostic um, species. So the diagnostic species are used to organize, to organize communities hierarchically. So we have got three phases in this particular um, classification um, of brown bracket approach so the brown bracket as we know is the relevant method so the first phase is the field phase which in which focuses on the collection of data 
the relevant data. And then the second phase is the analytical phase, which involves um, the sorted table analysis, which leads to differential tables. And then we have this syntaxonomic phase, which is the last one, which involves the naming of the unit according to the international um, um, rules of nomenclature and also the placement within the, the hierarchy um, system of syntax. So the international code of botanical nomenclature. And then the social table analysis, the step three and four, um, is the differential um, table. So the goal is just to identify the groups of species that characterizes the various um, associations. So these are the species with the intermediate consistency that is around 10 to 60 percent um, consistency. So the species with a high consistency are characteristics of the entire group of relevates and they are said to be not useful. So the species with the low consistency are likely not to be the characteristics of the relevant. Then here we have now the sorted differentiated table. So this table was constructed from the previous row data table. So here now you find that the species which show some association are grouped together into groups. As you can see, there we have group A, group B, group C. So these are the species which were seen to be occurring, showing some consistency in different plots. So they were grouped together. And you will find that some of the relevant numbers have been omitted, some due to the fact that the sites which they were occurring are said to have been uh, disturbed. So if a site is disturbed, which means it does not show any um, species. Then, after all that, when you have passed all those steps, you come to the last phase, which is the same taxonomic phase. So here now, is just to determine the formal names of the vegetation units according to the international um, rules of nomenclature. So you show relationships to existing units within the hierarchy of the nomenclature. So this um, should have been very simple to understand. And then we come to another subheading, which is the cluster analysis. So the cluster analysis is just the task to group a set of plants in such a way that plants in the same group are more similar to each other than those in the other groups. So its objective is just to simplify data and to represent data in graphical forms rather than in tabular forms. So the resulting figure um, is seen as a dendrogram of stands similar to the dendrogram of species that a numerical um, taxonomist um, would construct. So the first step is to express the similarity between two stands in a single number which is called a community coefficient. So there are many ways to calculate the community coefficient. All the formulas indicate the relative number of species shared by two stands or quadrants. So a CC of 100 represent identity, whilst a community coefficient of zero represent um, complete difference. So the rule of the thumb here is that any two plots with a community coefficient of more than 
fifty percent um they are said to be of the same association. So after the CC values are computed for every pair of stands, the two stands with the highest CC values are plotted on the graph as vertical lines, which are joined by the horizontal lines um, at that CC value. So the cluster analysis demonstration can be used for the classification of the investigator uh, if the investigator selects some threshold value at which to define the association. So as already mentioned, stands of one association are often expected to share a community coefficient above um, 50. So the association analysis um, is just a method which is used to, to classify um, different um, types of species which are seen to be forming an association or which occur in pairs in ecology. So this method concentrates on classifying pairs of species. So it is one of the most widely used classification me methods of plant ecology for the last um, decades. So the objective now here is to simplify the data and present them um, graphically rather than in tabular forms like in our uh, other analysis. So this method cannot be applied in in the relevé data because it focuses only on pairs of species and the relevé method as we know it it looks into community of species so in order to classify species according to this method you must first construct um, some quadrants in a particular environment. Then observe how the species occur in each quadrant. Then identify the species which occur most in different quadrants, but seeming to be forming pairs, occurring in pairs with other species, and record these species as the first differential species and again identify the second differential species. After identifying the species, you must then calculate the chi-square value in order to represent those species in a dendrogram to show how they form an association. So how does an association okay? So species can form association because they benefit from each other um, for survival. They can also show some association because of the soil type. If they prefer the same kind of soil, then they would occur at the same place. And also, if some species form association because of the nutrients in the particular um, environment, but then not all species are seen to be forming an association. Um, um, and also, if they do form some association, it does not mean that they always benefit from each other. So we say they show some association because um, they benefit from each other, say for survival. And then some would show some association because of the soil type, which enables them to grow in particular environment closer um, associated to each other. And then some species form association because of the nutrients which is found in certain environments. Therefore, not all species um, which form associations do get benefits from each other. Some they just form associations just because of the soil times because of the same kind of um, preferences of nutrients, um, 
maybe some because of the slope, the south and north facing slopes, preferring more sunlight or more shade, but they normally would not benefit from each other. And then some species, they do not form associations at all. For example, a species such as the Androstachys johnsoni, it is said that it cannot form any association with other species because of the allele chemicals which inhibit the growth of the other species. So, if you find Androstachys johnsoni growing, you would not see any other species growing in its vicinity. So it hinders the growth of other species and also of its um, seedlings. You cannot find its seedlings grows, growing around it because of the, the chemicals that it releases. So the invasive species cannot form an association because once they get an opportunity to germinate, they monopolize a certain area and then outcompete the natural species or native species which were occurring in that particular area before them. So we find that the um, the analysis, the association analysis, it builds the dendrogram from top um, to bottom rather than from bottom to up as in clustering. Therefore, the dendrogram of association analysis differs with that of the cluster um, analysis. So the first step now with the association analysis is to compute the chi-square value for every pair of species. So the species having the highest sum of the chi-square values with all the other species is selected as the first um, differential species. So in this case we've got 70 is the number of species and then we go there at 48 at the chi-square value the highest chi-square value was obtained from the species um, number 32 so which means that we are going to avoid going to the right then we go to move to the left because at the right we will find other species which do not form an association with this particular species. So we move this side and then uh, the chi-square value of 48. Then from there we are going to look for the second differential species on the right, not on the left. Therefore, we find it at the chi-square value of 10. And its species number 38 which means it is forming some association with species number 32 therefore still again we are not going to go to the right we are going to go to the left because to the right we won't find species which is forming an association with species number 38 Therefore, we're going to go down and look again for another species which is forming an association with this one. So this is how an association analysis um, a dendrogram builds up. So it builds up from the top to the bottom instead from the bottom going upwards.